adjusting before you call. Hey, Mana Queen Slayer! Glad you made it in one piece. After all, not everyone's so lucky. Meet my corporate compliance crew. Then check out our weapons locker inside. I reckon you'll find something you like. Then we call it even between us. The corporate model is the oldest and most efficient, not to mention stable structure history has ever shown us. Plus, corporations got certain rights, not entailed to individuals. I lead the C3s. Addy covers our payroll and expenditures. Lance handles the human capital. And Donald is our charming public face. Our system works. We've racked up more confirmed kills than any other crew you can hire. Can't imagine the competition. The best is the best, lady. That's all there is to it. We were hired to do so, why else? You did get the memo that we're mercenaries. Our client's a bit unorthodox, sure. He calls himself the broker, and prefers the glow of a terminal to flesh and blood interaction. But I can't fault his work ethic. Our current gig's to stop, by means of lethal force, any creatures exiting the caverns, including but not limited to marauders, iconoclasts, and agents operating for the MSI. You drive a hard bargain, Mana Queen Slayer. It don't make much financial sense for C3 to expend resources on any killing beyond the contract stipulations. As the Marauders didn't enter from the caves, the requirements are... Mm, murky. At the same time, we do want to keep our client alive. Until the payment's cleared. We recommended the client safeguard himself so I don't expect that the main doors will be accessible. Find a way to open them, and we'll clear any hostels on the inside. I'd best radio ahead for Joy and Hudson to prep for us. They'll be at the station entrance, ready with our finest auto mechanicals to assist you. C3s, prepare to move out. Bossman said you'd be up. Hiram's home. Fox radioed ahead. Said I'm to follow you. Provide whatever support you need. If those bastards start shooting, we'll join in. I gotta warn you, my girl Sunshine here is a tad trigger happy. Of course, me and her will follow your lead. Just wanted you to know we wouldn't begrudge you of any violent inclinations.
Ain't it the same, really? I'd say me and my piece meet each other halfway on the issue. She likes to be used, and I like to put her to good use, as so very often as I can. We can tell friend from foe, mind you, but it's probably best not to walk directly in front of us. You're A-OK, -okay, stranger. Hear that, Hudson? It's payday. must have sealed the door. He's... he spooks easy. elevator, but ain't gonna budge while this place is on lockdown. We keep moving forward. Look for another way up. Like a raft among the rocks. Thank you. 
You could use the socialization, you son of a bitch. Also, she hired me. To what purpose? I happen to have some significant problems I am dealing with right now. Marauders, running out of purpleberry wine three days ago, not being able to bloody broadcast. I see why Nioka tolerates you. Fine, I'll do the talking. By the hand of fate and my own cunning skill, I run this station. The Marauders may have other plans, and since my hired hands have clearly turned idle, it appears I have need of you. As my newest contractor, you may call me the Broker. Or we can call you Hiram, on account of that's your damn name, and doubly on the account of the Broker being a dumbass alternative. What? Everyone calls me that, aside from you. It's about time, I tell you. I'm up to my neck and marauders in here, which, by the by, they were supposed to prevent. I barricaded the broadcast center, but I can only hold out for so long. Clear the marauders out, and I'll pay you double the going rate. They destroy the transmission equipment, and I'll be out of business. The elevator and doors to the second floor are back online. Hurry before I have to lock them down again. Aside from the bids I'll be paying you, I trade in secrets, valuable ones, for my vocation. I'm sure you can come up with something you might like to ask me about in person once I'm safe. Too many, considering I hired a bunch of no-good mercs to keep them out in the first place. Already they've caused considerable damage to the station's property. If they take down the broadcast equipment, I'll be out of a job, permanently. How'd you do that so fast? Thank <laughs> you. 
Never thought I'd be ecstatic at having the walls painted in blood, but seeing as it's not mine, I'd say this calls for a celebration. And you got me my money's worth out of the C3s. I ought to have simply dealt with you in the first place. Hmm, yes, I believe I do. This ought to square our debt. One hefty payment for a highly valued service rendered. But, I admit, I do wonder why Nioka has brought you to me. Allow me to pose my question in another manner. Why, in the nebula, are you here? That is the primary goal behind locking myself high in a tower. Some folks don't look kindly on me being a purveyor of delicate information. Phineas must have sent you. He's the only one insane enough to send someone to Monarch to rush me. I knew it was only a matter of time before he came a-knocking. Look, I might be late, but I fulfill my contracts always. Oh, you do, do you? I have lost track of the number of beers you owe me for chasing raptodons off your stoop. Careful, I know that line. I use it all the time. I take offense to that. Look, okay. I was delayed by MSI and the Iconoclasts. The idiots were scrambling all transmissions to override each other's broadcasts. But as you've shut them down, I'm back in business. I don't doubt that you are working with Phineas, but my contract specifies I relay any acquired information to the purchaser, and to the purchaser alone. However, to send the data, I will need your assistance in cycling the antenna's receiver so I can input the needed adjustments. You make it sound so scandalous. Phineas has been in hiding for the past 35 years. He got in touch with Nioka first, who I use as a physical go-between. The rest is history. Now you hold on. I do not physically go between anyone but that of my choose- Oh. Oh, apologies. You meant- Right. Yes. I brave the wilderness so you don't have to. Precisely. I really ought to give you a raise. Ah, oh, don't be ridiculous. We're resetting a broadcast tower, not filing taxes. There are no errands, spreadsheets, or rituals involved. It's simple, truly. I merely need you to waltz outside and throw the lever to cycle the power. I'll key in the numerical adjustments from in here. Someone has trust issues, though I can't hardly feign surprise. Yes, that is all. No, I am not mocking you. Much. Just step outside, flip the switch, depart forever. Understood? Good. Marvelous. We're in agreement. This is why I stopped helping out around here, you know. It's always throw this lever, shoot that marauder, save my life. Just one thing after another with you. I'm starting to see why you don't get much company out here. Terrific. I'll be here, waiting with bated breath. Give a shout if the panel electrocutes you.
Nice going. assert your dominance. I doubt I can make you do anything you don't wish to. Look, I am well aware that at times I may have the tiniest iota of a prickly exterior, but I must admit I have grown rather fond of you. As Nioka can attest, I do not form attachments with many. Do take care. Why, he told us to leave without flinging insults at our persons. He really does like you, Captain. Anyone else hear a high-pitched whining? Did I get tinnitus, or is that just Hiram? So much for peace and quiet. Would it kill the universe to cut me some slack? Yes, the one that crashed. I saw it on the security feed. A bit grainy, but an invigorating watch all the same. What about it? Is this bonding? I'm 
I'm not sure I like it. Next, you'll be asking me how I got the scar on my chin when I was 11. Most of it's underneath along my jaw, but yes, it seems to have faded with time. Moral of the story is, never run with scissors. I fear it's a sad day when you've resorted to asking me for advice. Sanjar is about as deadly as a spilled can of lead paint. If anyone's to aim a cannon at my face, I'd prefer it be him. But he'd never have the guts to defend Monarch if it came down to it. Graham's as likely to bomb Monarch as he is to protect it, down to the last dying man, woman, and sister pig. As I'm not the one with access to the artillery cannon, I reckon the decision's ultimately up to you. Me! I'd end up blasting myself from the face of the planet, trying to disengage the target lock on the bloody thing. Thank you, but no. I'm getting a headache behind my left temple. What could be causing it? The glare from the terminal screen? Or something else? Oh, great. I love doing pro bono work for friends. Aw, you called us friends. I'd normally entertain your self-aggrandizing delusions, but this time it's important. Important to you is not the same as important to me. Although I do recognize that you may have earned some goodwill during your months laboring for me. Tug on my heartstrings, why don't you? Look, I'll do what I can, all right? Rebecca Hodges and Anders Wattsworth. They took a UDL contract back when Monarch went to shit and I need to find them. I believe them to be on Terra too. If UDL hired two hunters back then, it would have been for creature clearing purposes round one of their spacer's choice outposts. These are the coordinates for the outpost under the last UDL contract. Now scram. And, uh, good luck. Give my regards to Phineas. A reminder to all crew members, there is only one toilet on the ship. We are now in orbit above Edgewater, Captain. You got a second? I can't believe I wanted to shake his hand. I need a shower. It makes you wonder if being a treacherous two-timing coward is some sort of contagious disease or if he was just born that way. At first, I liked what Graham was doing. The iconoclasts were gonna change Halcyon for the better. But then we found out Graham was behind the slaughter of Amber Heights. How can anybody so morally bankrupt lead a movement to transform the colony? Yeah, maybe you're right. 
You'd never do something like that, would you? Slaughter a whole community of innocents? I'm sure Graham told himself the same thing. He wasn't the one who held the gun and pulled the trigger. All he did was turn a key. The thing is, that's all it takes. Sometimes the difference between right and wrong is turning a key, or looking the other way, or keeping your mouth shut when you ought to speak up. Let's get back to it. I need to put all this ugly business with Graham behind me. Sanitizing within established radius. Investing. Here they come! The bridge, you say? Here goes nothing! No hard feelings, okay? I'd wager this is the outpost. Rebecca! Anders! Come on out! Take a gander. Huh. Rebecca taught me this once. You can jerry-rig these old locks so as they don't open anymore. But 
We've only ever done that if we're in a real bind. Here, I'll fix it. Oh no. Oh no. What did you do? Oh, Nyoka. I'm so sorry. I don't... they were... That bitch! They were all set to abandon us! What would Clara say, huh? Every day she'd ask if we heard from you. And she'd have forgiven you! The kid had a soul that made the sulfur smell like roses! <sighs> I'd leave your medallions to rot with you, but... Clara would want to be buried with her sister. At least... at least I know. Ought to have learned by now that getting one's hopes up tends to open them to being dashed across the stars. I hate to say this, but Clara died thinking her sister was still fighting to get back home. I think I'm glad. If she were still alive now, break her to know the truth. Yeah, maybe. I'm used to disappointment. She was still so naive as to let it hurt her every time it happened. Only thing left is to take these medallions home, which means figuring out how to bait the Mana Queen out of our old base. The most pissed off I've ever seen a queen was when a foreign species was on her soil. I'd wager the stench of a primal might do the trick. <laughs> That'd be boring. Half the fun in exploring is the fact that you're on an unknown trail. Never had the pleasure of hunting primals, but I hear they're all over Scylla. Let's tear a few apart, shall we? I'm sure they've got pheromones. Everything does.
You are welcome here. Some crew members are causing a disturbance on the ship. You're adjusting before you call. You're anticipating. You... Oh, I'm anticipating. What if I shoot a friend? I'm accident. Don't let a hunk of metal control. You're not always a Yes, you caught me ruminating again. Guilty as charged. What's occupying your thoughts? Hey, Cap. Sometimes I wonder about Mr. Hawthorne. What was he like? Why'd he make the computer a talkie? You think he got lonely, flying about on his own? Oh, you mean Sam? He's just the sweetest, ain't he? A real charmer, my dad'd say. Nah, but I've been thinking on one. Gotta get to know him better, I think. Maybe ask him what he prefers. It ain't nice to give folks a nickname without him giving you the okay first, you know? Of course, that don't stop Felix. Welcome back, Captain. How can I be of assistance? May luck be with you. Of course, as I am sure you are aware, luck does not exist. But it seems to comfort humans to believe they possess good quantities of it. We're now in orbit above Stellar Bay, Captain. <laughs> 